if we can do a freeze in some areas and block the fighting and bring some type of political process inside Syria, that will be stopping the, the fertile ground in which ISIS has been cultivating its own advances. If, if, if. <laughs> Welcome back to the arena. I'm Michael Corrin. What is going on in uh, Syria and Iraq? And of course, Canada is now involved, particularly in Iraq. Emmanuel Ottolenghi is a political scientist, a member of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracy. Democracies. He joins us now from Washington. Welcome back to the show, sir. Uh, first question, Canada is directly involved now. There, there are aircraft on missions maybe as we speak. Um, are we really going to change anything long term? I understand we can destroy ISIS fighters, we can destroy some of their bulldozers and, 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 and artillery, but can we really stop them? You can slow them down. You can, uh, uh, you know, put a, put a wrench into their fast advance, uh, uh, which which looked uh, irresistible at the beginning of the summer. Uh, but uh, currently, the situation looks like a stalemate, and uh, I don't think that it's a good uh, it's a good show to see uh, a, a coalition of Western forces led by America, uh, the United States, the strongest, uh, most powerful army in the world. Uh, unable to achieve its military goals uh, against the force of a few thousand determined fanatics uh, over the course of weeks and months. Something has to change because a stalemate blocking their advance is just not enough. Thank you for saying that. We have had various experts on the show, retired soldiers, Canadian military, and they've been so reluctant to say this. We're not winning. Um, this is a status quo with a, a group of terrorists, really. And we're speaking about the, the massive military power of, of, of this coalition. They're winning, not militarily, but they're winning because we are still fighting them. They, they should be finished by now. This, this is a propaganda victory for them. Look, I mean, the, the situation in Kobani, the, uh, the Kurdish town at the Syrian-Kurdish-Turkish uh, border, is, uh, is, is in a sense, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the kind of uh, the ground zero of this problem. Uh, when uh, coalition strikes began, Kobani looked set to fall to uh, the Islamic State uh, forces. Uh, we are about a month uh, later, Kobani is still resisting, but uh, the balance uh, of that fight hasn't been tipped decisively in favor of the Kurdish uh, forces defending the town. Uh, and again, we're talking about an intervention by uh, over 20 Western countries mm. with uh, formidable air power involved, uh, and yet they're not able to decisively change the tide. The problem, though, here is not just one about uh, the kind of military might uh, and means that are committed to the struggle. The question here is political. What is the strategy behind going after the Islamic State? Uh, is it wise? to leave uh, the Assad regime in power? Is it wise to seek a detent regionally with Iran, which has been stoking the Syrian civil war and is partially responsible for the sectarian quagmire we're confronting in the region? These are all political questions. And unfortunately, until and unless the White House and the U.S. administration are willing to confront these questions, I'm not so sure that a military strategy that can address the problem can be found. I agree with you to an embarrassing degree. Look, we could send in heavy infantry, Marines, special forces from just three Western countries alone. We could defeat ISIS. There is not that desire. And but all of the Western powers are very ambivalent. Do they want Assad to be in power or not? And I think this is to their advantage. They simply want some sort of conflict to continue. That's actually the policy they're aspiring to. Well, I'm not sure that there is a, you know, that intentionally this is the outcome they're seeking. I think that there is just a, uh, you know, they're confronted with uh, with such a confusing, complex situation. Much of it, by the way, is the outcome of Western inaction and, mm -hmm. and an unwillingness uh, to intervene earlier yeah. in the civil war in Syria. Uh, but because the situation has become so bad, so complex, uh, you look around, there are no, there are no uh, you know, good options. Um, you don't want to make it worse. Uh, and, and that leads to half measures. That's been the policy for three and a half years, embracing half measures because going all the way 
never seems to be the right answer. And so we have made the, uh, the perfect the enemy of the good, and the result is a situation that is both unbearable uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and drawing answers that are simply inadequate for the kind of uh, outcomes we should, uh, we should want. Mm. L last few seconds, I wish we had more time. If you could change military policy right now, if you could uh, advise or recommend the Western powers to do something in a different way, what would it be? A much broader commitment of military power to go after not just the Islamic State, but also the Assad regime and its Iranian proxies uh, in the area. Only by toppling the Assad regime and providing succor and support to more moderate forces inside Syria and creating breathing space for them, mm -hmm. can we begin to see a solution to the crisis in that part of the world. Well said. Appreciate your time very much indeed. Thank you.